this year, a new government in Brazil. It seems that Brazil relinquished its role as a broker deal. Right? And we, Brazil is still a member of the Security Council. Uh, uh, my question is, do you think Brazil relinquished this role? And if it did, what does that tell us of Brazil's role last year? Wow, I don't know. That's the honest question, the honest answer. Um, Brazil is certainly not a broker with things uh, Iranian now. Uh, it cannot be. It got very burned. Both Brazil as a country and the Lula administration, and in particular for a minister, Amory, who paid the highest cost personally for all of this. Now, does this mean we should dismiss Brazil as an actor in the Middle East? Not at all. Uh, Brazilian interests in the Middle East have been expanding quite dramatically now. Uh, in the course of the last 10 years, a new argument developed that did not exist when I was a kid going to school. I did not know that my country is partially Middle Eastern, that we have very large Jewish, Arab communities that we knew, but we didn't know that these were critical for Brazilian identity today. That's been politically built up. This is what kids learn today. Brazil's done a um, pretty amazing job at um, proliferating embassies in the region. There are a number of agreements in the region. Trade has multiplied in some cases by a factor of seven or eight. Um, Brazil has a number of interests that it did not have before. In the Lebanon in particular, things are moving for Brazil um, in important ways. So I think we're going to see Brazil there a lot, but not on Iran, not now at least. And I think there is uh, an awful lot of caution in Brasilia. So whenever you go to Brasilia now, and you want to talk about Iran or ask people about Iran, people go, mm, they leave. Um, that's the sentiment. But I don't think that's going to last long. Because the material interests are pushing Brazil towards a more active uh, relief policy. One more question, I think. Okay. Uh, this has been an excellent discussion about the dynamics between state actors, and I just wanted to speak up for the uh, mute stepchild in the room, the International Atomic Energy Agency. Uh, wondering, uh, Thank you, uh, Thank you <laughs> wondering uh, why Brazil is so unhelpful to the IAEA in, in uh, trying to enforce uh, safeguards rules, trying to do something when countries ignore their IAEA obligations, because I've heard the arguments against sanctions, uh, and I have my own uh, critique of the United States and how it has been unhelpful to the IAEA in not sharing information on Syria uh, when it needed to, on ignoring IAEA inspectors in the case of Iraq. But I would expect more from a Brazil or a Turkey in terms of strengthening IAEA to be purer than Caesar's wife. But other than getting an argument to the IAEA over uh, what parts of your centrifuges you want to cover, what are you doing to make sure that IAEA is, is strengthened? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I don't think Brazil is doing much uh, on that front. But let me try and clarify why Brazil has uh, the relationship you described with, with uh, the regime. When Brazil had a secret nuclear program under the military, and the military were trying to develop an enrichment capacity, they bought blueprints illegally from IAEA uh, fonctionnaires, from public servants. So the Brazilians have good cause not to trust Vienna on many accounts. We have to remember that Brazil's dis decision to adhere to the NPT takes Brazil about 20 years. From the first debate, should we, should we not, to actually signing on, it takes 20 years. And on the way to get there, Brazil first decides to have a bilateral set of inspections with Argentina, mutual inspections. And only then, their bilateral, the bilateral institution they set up signs an agreement with Vienna. And only four years after that, Brazil signs on to the NBT. Brazil still has problems with the inspections because it doesn't trust the inspectors and because it thinks that many countries like Syria are very unhappy about the nationality of inspectors. One of the crucial things when inspectors actually go is what passports they hold. And the Brazilians are very sympathetic to the notion that maybe Syrian officials do not want to have 
American inspectors there because they think the American inspectors will be biased. So that helps explain. Now, what is Brazil doing now to sort it out, to improve the quality of Vienna? I'm not sure they're doing much, but then I suspect that part of the reason why they're not doing much is because they don't think that they can get much change um, going in Vienna at all, given the entrenched interests that tend to dominate international organizations. Um, I think. But I may be wrong, I don't know. I think you're, you want to answer that? Um, the, the sensitivity by the Turkish side on the Iranian enrichment um, um, is important. So I, maybe that was one of the um, issues in this, right? How Turkey um, is ready to say, yes, Iran has your own, you know, enrichment rights. Um, so in that sense, the, the tendency to, um, there's been a discussion going on on how, uh, in terms of nuclear fuel, um, um, who is going to monitor and how, uh, whether it should be um, the suppliers' groups' uh, monopoly on it should be uh, continued, etc. So I think Turkey is sensitive on that issue, but I, I'm not sure if Turkey has a broad nuclear policy, except uh, it's dependent on foreign energy, and it's, it is trying to set up uh, two nuclear reactors now for energy. So it is particularly sensitive about who is going to supply the fuel. It, right now, um, it has to be Russians um, and uh, others. But uh, so in that way, it relates to, um, I guess, uh, what you're talking about. Um, but um, the earlier questions of us, same set of incentives exist for Turkey, that's for sure. And probably uh, incentives got stronger now with the Arab Spring for Turkey to you know, for for nuclear issue to be resolved, uh, because that would complicate the situation in the Middle East a lot more. So, so he would probably try to do a lot more. Uh, okay, dear, thank you, and I'd like to thank the panelists and the audience for a truly good discussion. And I think it's a sign of how one issue can be part of a larger issue. And in both cases, uh, there are many opinions, and nothing's been solved. So, I think we can say that. Thank you. <laughs>